Hello everybody, Maven here, and with GM Nightfalls coming at Tuesday's reset, I thought I'd make this video to share my thoughts on what weapons and what builds would be good to use for each class in each GM Nightfall available this season. So if you are new here, first of all, welcome. Second of all, you may not have any reason to believe in what I have to say in this video since you don't know me. So I thought I'd share a little bit of my GM experience with you. Again, this is not to gloat. This is strictly just to earn a little bit of credibility for, you know, my recommendations in this video. So I've been doing GMs since the season after they came out. So I've had Conqueror for nine seasons. I've gilded every season and I'll put a screenshot somewhere on the screen, but I have almost 700 Grandmaster Nightfall clears and I have experience in speedrunning. So I would say I'm a pretty sweaty Destiny player. And at this point, I have a pretty good idea of what loadouts and what builds are good and what is bad. So hopefully that earns a little bit of trust in my recommendations for this video. And with all that nonsense out of the way, let's break down some builds. Don't forget to hit the like button if it helps and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so just a couple more things to preface this video. Firstly, I'm not going to explain the functionality of every single build, every single exotic armor piece, and every single exotic weapon. I'm going to assume that everyone watching knows what these exotics do. And secondly, as of recording this, the Osteostriga bug still works. So if you poison a target, swap to a weapon with Vorpal, you get infinite tick damage. So if that still works at tomorrow's reset, then that is going to be a pretty solid thing to run in literally every GM, so keep that in mind. And a few more things, but I would invest 100 in resilience if you possibly can, or get as much as you can. And then on your chest, make sure you throw on resist mods with the current active threat modifier. Uh, they have diminishing returns when you stack them, so you can round it out with something like concussive dampener, melee resist, or sniper resist, depending on what GM you're doing, and other resist if you need to. And I feel this is pretty necessary, but I feel like everybody on the fire team should have heavy ammo finder and heavy ammo scout. So that makes it when your finder bricks drop a brick for you, it also drops one for your teammates. And then it happens for them as well. So there's just gonna be heavy bricks everywhere. So this is the artifact mod setup that I got, but if you're planning on playing on Warlock with Starfire Protocol, I would recommend having Solar Surge as well. Because when you pair this with stacks and stacks on your boots, it makes it so when you pick up a fire sprite, you get three stacks of armor charge, which instantly allows you to use something like special finisher on your class item to make special ammo for your whole fire team. And now it's no secret that Bricks from Beyond is broken. So if you just use triple void classes on every GM this season, you would have no trouble doing that and be pretty good. Um, however, I will be fair and I'll talk about other potential classes in this video as well. So let's get to it. So even though the catch up node does exist and we do have access to all six GMs tomorrow, I'm still gonna go over them in the order of the weeks that they are coming up. So the first week is going to be the Proving Grounds. So first to explain the symbols that you see underneath the words Proving Grounds, BU stands for Barrier Unstoppable and later on you'll see O for Overload. And then the symbols with the white around them, the strand and the solar, that means that those are the surges and then the solar symbol with the red around it that means it's the threat so surges means you're going to do 25 percent more damage with that element and then the threat means you're going to take 25 percent more damage from that element and then the sniper symbol means that it is surging sniper because this season they introduced surging weapon types so in proving grounds we're going to do 25 percent more damage with sniper rifles so with that out of the way, let's talk about some armor. So for Warlock, I would recommend Starfire Protocol, but Phoenix Protocol is also going to be really good, especially in the tank room when you pair it alongside the Titans Ursa Furiosa, because typically if you're not on Hunters, you want to stay on the top back area of the tank room and you can chain well into Ursa, into well into Ursa, into well into Ursa if you have Phoenix Protocol because of the orbs you generate for each other and the amount of super energy you get refunded. So Phoenix Protocol is actually looking really good this season, guys. So don't sleep on it. Starfire Protocol, however, you can really never go wrong. It is currently meta and they have not yet nerfed it. So it is good to use anytime. And for the Hunter, I would recommend Omnioculus. You can also go with something like Rabbits on Forfeit or Gear Falcons if you'd like. Now, in a a lot of these GMs today, I'm going to be recommending Aeon Swift, but for Proving Ground specifically, Aeon Swift I don't think is going to be the most useful. In the starting area, you'll have plenty of heavy, and in the tank room, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities for finishers. In the boss room, there's only like two champions, so Aeons are not going to be the most effective thing here. So I'd go with something like Omni for the consistency. Now on to some exotic weapons. Now throughout this video, you're going to see whenever there are barrier champions present, I will be recommending the Wish Ender as well as the Outbreak Perfect. 
Perfected because this season there is anti-barrier pulse rifle so the outbreak perfected is going to be very very good this season guys just as good as wishander for anti-barrier but normally i would also recommend the arbalest it got some big nerfs though and in the tank room you're going to run out of ammo very quickly and not be able to hit those treads wishender is going to be better for that situation and also because of the fact that wishender hits three individual times it generates a lot of super energy it's going to help you chain those wells better it's just generally going to be better and the next is the Ariana's Val. This is good because of the solar surge. And then also it's uh, going to be very good at hitting those tank treads and the vast amount of phalanxes in this GM. They're everywhere and you can shoot right through their shields. It's pretty good. And then we got the Polaris Lance. Polaris Lance has always been a top tier pick for this GM, but even more so now that it got a massive buff and it can ignite things in just two perfect fifth shots. So if you're running Solar Warlock, I'd highly recommend running the Polaris Lance. And then for legendary weapon recommendations, we got the Azume RR4 or any other solar sniper you may have. Like there's the Far Future, there's Twilight Oath that gets led from Gold Vorpal. But a solar sniper is going to be really good here because of both Sniper Surge and Solar Surge together. Solar Sniper is going to hit really hard. And remember, there is also Kinetic Surge on every GM this season. So what that means is that if your subclass matches the active surge, your Kinetic weapons do 25% more damage. So if you are playing on a Solar subclass, your Kinetic weapons do 25% more damage. So you could also run a Kinetic Sniper like the Succession, and you can run a Kinetic Scout Rifle for Unstoppable, Kinetic Pulse Rifle for Anti-Barrier, or even just Solar ones if you're not playing on a Solar subclass. So you can even run something like the Visions of Confluence or even the Stars in Shadow. And next we got the Lubre's Ruin Solar Glaive because there is Unstoppable Glaive this season. Now this is the only of all six GMs that I'd recommend a Glaive in. And uh, I'll tell you why. I did a video a little while back if you want to see it. I, I don't remember what I titled it, but you see a PNG on the screen somewhere and I'll link it in the top right corner if you want to check it out. I'd highly recommend checking it out if you want to see why Lubre's Ruin is so dang good in this Proving Grounds GM. You can just sit in the face of an Unstoppable Champion all day long and take damage from them, but it's also allowing you to take an entire volley of fireballs from the end boss no problem at all so if you happen to have a lube razor in with a movable object i'd highly recommend giving it a try and then for my heavy of choice i got the cataclysmic there the cataclysmic is going to be great with the solar burn and the bait and switch stacking on top of that it's great for hitting those tank treads it's great for hitting the end boss for consistent damage and the boss is a pretty forgiving crit unlike all the other cabal the boss you can actually shoot above his head and there's like this invisible visible space that will somehow still hit a crit. Trust me, Cataclysmic is going to be great here. Now moving on to the Heist Battleground Mars, we got Barriers and Unstops, Strand and Void Surge. Just letting you know, Strand Surge is in everything this season. Don't pay attention to that really. There's only really one or two GMs where like Strand would be viable in my opinion, but uh, Void Surge, uh, Solar Threat, and then Machine Gun Surge. Now, because of Machine Gun and Void Surge put together, you would be absolutely throwing if you did not run a Void Machine Gun in this one. Trust me, this is going to be the best possible thing you can run. There is the Corrective Measure, there's the Commemoration, there's the Retrofit Escapade. Take your pick. It's going to be the best thing to run. Do not run anything other than that, trust me. Now on to some armor recommendations. Now, like I said, Starfire Protocol, very, very broken, very meta, and it's gonna be good in almost everything, but this is the one of all six GMs where I would recommend against the Starfire Protocol. Now you can still run it. It would still be good, but the Phoenix Protocol is definitely going to shine here. It's definitely gonna be better. Again, chaining it with that Ursa Furiosa from the Titan. You can chain the two supers back and forth and back and forth. That is gonna be very good for the capture the plate encounter at the very start. That's a very hectic set of encounters, going to A, B, and C and defending it. And Phoenix Protocol allowing you to chain your wells is gonna be amazing. However, if you already have another Warlock on your team doing that, and you are a Warlock as well, then I could also see considering the Verity's Brow, because you're going to be tossing a lot of Void Grenades everywhere, and you're going to allow your teammates to also have Death Row so that they get increased Grenade Regen as well, so you can all spam grenades, because it's going to be very, very ad clear heavy 
throughout the entirety of the GM leading up to the boss room. And even just placing a well in the boss room kind of sucks. If you're a warlock, you're likely gonna go up into the cheese spot on the top left and you're not even gonna have an opportunity to place a well, in which case going void lock, I think would be better in this GM. So that is why I'm recommending the controverse hold to spam those super void nades. So yeah, keep that in mind. Verity's only if you have another well lock, but if there's only one Warlock, run Controverse Hold over anything. Controverse is gonna be great here. And then for Titan, like I said, Ursa Furiosa, it's gonna be great in those Ad Claire encounters. It's gonna be good in the A, B, and C encounter and the one in the room where Anna Bray used to be. It's gonna be great in that room because you have to defend while the ghost gets to 100% and uh, you can help your teammates get their supers. Now, I would not recommend going bubble because if you go to the boss room and you try to survive by placing a bubble, it's not gonna work because the boss with his giant ax is gonna one shot you out of your bubble. If you place a well, you're gonna get one shot out of the well. It's not even worth placing a defensive super like that. You might as well just use Ursa. If somebody dies in the boss room, you can pop your Ursa and go and res them and block the damage and get away. And you can probably be able to take an axe hit behind a sentinel shield with Ursa up. And then for the hunter, I would not recommend Aeons in this one because there's only two champs in the boss room and otherwise there's not that many champs at all. So I would recommend going with Gear Falcons over anything because when it is Void Surge and Machine Gun Surge and you're going to be using a Void Machine Gun, it's going to be great to have Gear Falcons so you have 100% uptime of invis and volatile rounds. That's going to be amazing for your Void Machine Gun. And then Omni Oculus just for consistency as well is going to be pretty solid to get a bunch of reses, especially in the boss room. A lot of people are going to be dying unless you're doing the cheese. And then moving on to the exotic weapons, since there are barrier champions, again, recommending the Outbreak Perfected as well as the Wish Ender. Now, for most of these, I actually wouldn't recommend Arbalest, but for this one, I will. And the reason being is because you're gonna use a Void Machine Gun, you're probably gonna wanna pair it with Double Special because when you're running Double Special, you can get more heavy ammo drops. And when you get kills with your heavy, you get more special ammo drops and vice versa. They work with each other very well. So I would go with something like a Void Machine Gun, an Arbalest, and then your choice of these other Void Specials in the Legendary slot. Like there's the Null Composure, which I'm personally gonna be running. It's gonna be very great. There is the Deafening Whisper and there is the Nessa's Oblation. If you can get the Nessa's Oblation with Reconstruction Forpool, that's gonna be great to pair with the Infinite Osteostriga build. And then of course there is the Wither Horde, which is just generally a very solid weapon. It's gonna be good for just tagging that final boss and then running away. You just come back again, tag him and run away. You cannot stand there and fight that guy. He will murderize you. You have to just tag him and get away. So Wither Horde's good for that. And then for rounding out a final legendary recommendation here, a Void Scout is gonna be pretty good for stunning those unstoppable champions. There are a couple of them in the boss room. You don't really need too much anti-barrier in this one because there is only I believe two anti-barriers in this entire GM so you don't have to worry too much on the barrier end so I'd go with like a Void Scout there is like I said the Duma Chelchis which you can also get with Vorpal Frenzy to pair with the Infinite Osteo build if you wanted to do that but there is also something like the Vouch Safe and also Royal Chase I don't know I wouldn't recommend that one but you get it. Moving on to the Hypernet Current this is the new strike this season it is unstoppable and overload Strand and Solar Surge with Arc Threat and Grenade Launcher Surge. So Solar GL's gonna be pretty good. However, if you look at our weapon choices, we have no Solar GL's. Why is that the case? Well, it's because in this GM, there's going to be a lot of large groups of Void Shielded adds. And so you're gonna want a Void Weapon to just explode that whole entire group of adds very easily. And a Solar GL is not gonna do that as efficiently. So I'd Definitely recommend going Void on this one, even though it's Solar Surge. Now, it's an arc threat, even though there is really not that much arc damage in this one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the only arc damage in this GM is going to be from the Minotaurs that drop the Craniums. I think uh, the Craniums do arc damage. I think they used to do Void, but I think now they do arc. That's the only thing, so you don't really have to worry too much about arc damage, but you can still run arc resist if you want to. Now for armor recommendations, Warlock, of course, typical Starfire protocol is gonna be pretty solid. Can melt the champions, can melt the tormentor, can melt the boss. 
And uh, Controverse hold, again, because there's large groups of void adds and you can spam grenades back to back infinitely with Controverse hold pretty much. It's gonna be a solid choice. For Titan, finally, you can go hard of and most light on Void. You can actually use a bubble to stay alive in this one because there's gonna be nothing that's really gonna invade your bubble and one-shot you, just like in the Mars Heist Battlegrounds. And for Hunter, you can actually go Aeons in this one because there is a lot of unstoppable champions in this one. And unstoppable champions are usually those Cabal Phalanxes. And those guys like to be in close proximity to you. They like to be right up in your face. So since there's gonna be a lot of champs in close proximity, Aeons can really shine here. Now onto our exotic weapon choices. This is the one of the six GMs that I'd recommend unironically running the Osteostriga outside of the infinite tick damage Vorpal glitch because it's just generally gonna be good here. There's a lot of tight groups of adds as well as there are overload champions and it is overload SMG and auto this season so Osteo is pretty good and then I'd recommend the Lemon Arc because that is also an overload weapon and also helps against those groups of void shielded adds and it's just generally a very trustworthy weapon in GMs and I personally love this thing and then we come to another bow the Leviathan's Breath now Leviathan's Breath got a massive buff this season and it is also bugged as well it's doing double damage it has a very good ammo economy so if there's a hunter running Aeons on your team you're just gonna have ammo the whole time this thing there are plenty of unstops to hit with this and it's also going to be pretty good against the end boss because it is a giant hydra with a big crit so it's definitely something you're going to want to try out and then for our third and final bow recommendation here the hierarchy of needs is going to be very solid it is the highest dps uh primary ammo bow in the game and on top of that it is solar surge and it is a solar bow so it's going to be very good for dps as a primary and then to round it all out wither horde again generally a very good weapon there's a lot of unstoppables you can stick with that the end boss being a hydro with the shield rotating around it you can just stick it and keep running stick it and keep running so that's going to be pretty good and then on to the legendary recommendations the riptide ought to just be an exotic weapon at this point like the riptide is a ridiculous weapon one of the top tier weapons in the game now because it can deal with all three champions if you have chill clip on this thing because the stasis slow can stun the overloads the stasis shatter can stun the unstops and then just freezing a barrier champion constantly can just deal with them so the riptide deals with every champion and since it's very good at particularly overloads and unstops it's going to be good to use here and then we move on to the void machine gun going to be very good again for the groups of void adds and also this boss is going to be stationary with health gates and very very dotable so you really don't have to stress too much about having to run something like a linear or a rocket so just run a machine gun it's going to be very good for helping with the ad clear helping with the champs so do yourself a favor use a void machine gun this season in general it's just going to be always good especially with volatile flow being on the artifact and then we move on to things like the null composure and the deafening whisper again i sound like a broken record but because of the groups of void ads and these things can collapse things because wave frame because of reservoir burst and then we got the avoid scout like you can run a doom of Chelchis, you can run a vouch safe you can run an asia's embrace whatever you want to run but avoid scout's going to be good for the unstoppable champions and then we got the funnel web because of the overload champions and you can also run something like the unforgiven if you'd like now moving on to the arms dealer now this strike got a bunch of new encounters it got totally revamped this season it's an entirely different strike and not nearly as farmable as it used to be so it's no joke same thing with lake of shadows it's no longer a joke it is some serious business so this thing is going to be a barrier unstoppable void surge solar threat rocket launcher surge so you put two and two together void rocket 50 percent more damage you want to run a void rocket the two-tailed fox is going to be a top pick here guys you know the catalyst out of this season it's doing a lot of damage it does the most single target damage of any rocket now run a two-tailed fox it's going to be great but if you don't have it or you don't have the catalyst you can run a legendary void rocket like a red herring or a royal entry but at the same time, I would also recommend 
What do you know? A void machine gun. It is void burn, void machine gun, volatile flow. You can run gear falcons hauberk on your hunter. It's going to be amazing for ad clear, especially because the uh, volatile is infinite with like volatile flow already, but even more so if you're running gear falcons hauberk because you get volatile on command. And while you are volatile, all your weapons will just instantly gain intrinsic anti-barrier. So you can deal with the barrier champions with your machine gun. And also there are a lot of phalanxes because it is a cabal strike. So you can just shoot right through those phalanx shields. So machine gun, another top pick. And other than Gear Falcons, we got the same recommendations as the last strike. You can bubble to live. You can really take advantage of Starfire. Controverse is amazing here because of Void Surge, spamming those super nades over and over. There's a lot of unstoppables in close proximity as well as some barriers. So Aeons, you can take full advantage of. And then of course, because of barrier champions, we return to the recommendations of things like Outbreak Perfected and the Wish Ender. And Leviathan's Breath as well is gonna be great here along with the Void Surge, gonna hit like a truck you want a strong precision weapon most likely because there is now a tormentor boss and it's not one of the little chump tormentors that can be finished like in lake of shadows it is actually a boss tormentor the kind that cannot be finished and uh there is one in the tank room where the second tank used to be they now replace it with a tormentor so having a strong precision weapon is going to be great there you got to hit those shoulders you got to hit that stomach so having something look like the leviathan's breath is going to be very good so also another reason why wither horde is going to be great here stick that thing run away stick that thing run away rinse and repeat and now because of the fact that you may possibly run something like the Royal Entry or the Red Herring or whatever other Void Launcher because of Rocket Burn and Void Burn, then if two people are doing that, then you might as well have the third person run a Gallerhorn so that you can get Wolfpack rounds. And that's gonna be pretty beneficial to the whole team, especially because there's a lot of champs and a lot of things to finish with Aeons, you will always have heavy ammo. And for the final exotic recommendation here, we got the Collective Obligation Exotic Pulse Rifle. Now this is going to be particularly good on the Heart of the Most Light Void Titan as well as the Gear Falcon's Hunter because you can pretty much have an infinite uptime of that Void Leech buff giving you a plus 20% damage buff pretty much at all times because of you know the Gear Falcon's perk and uh, Void Titan has controlled demolition as an aspect so it's going to be a beast of a primary to use for anti-barrier. But if you wanted to run a legendary anti-barrier pulse rifle I would recommend the Vele's X. There are other options but I I feel like the Vele's X is something that everyone has at this point and it is a pretty reliable option and if you need something unstoppable that is a void primary you got the Duma Chelchis again as well as the Vouchsafe as well as the Aisha's Embrace. And then the Nessus Obligation is actually going to be a pretty good special void weapon to run with the Void Burn. But this is going to be particularly good for those Aeons Void Hunters because having a slug shotgun is a very good way to like stand in the face of a stunned unstoppable champion and DPS them down to the point where they are in finisher. Because a lot of the times if you're not running something like that or like something like a Null Composure, you're just going to be standing in their face, they're going to unstun and you're going to have to like, you're going to die or you're going to have to run away and stun them again but if you have something like a slug you can easily put them down in a finisher and that really helps out your teammates and then at the same time you could be also running special finisher on your class items so you can generate both heavy and special you can get special for yourself and have even more shotgun ammo so that's pretty good for aeons hunters and as usual you can get reconstruction vorpal on it which will allow you to run an infinite osteo build again and then one more recommendation that I forgot to actually put on this layout, but uh, Succession, a kinetic sniper, gonna be really good here if you're running a Void subclass, because remember, Void Surge, so if you're running a Void subclass, your kinetic weapons also have Surge. So yeah, Succession's great. Moving on to the Glassway, we got Barrier and Overload, Solar Surge, Void Threat, and GL Surge. So GL plus Solar Surge together means we might want to consider running a Solar Heavy GL. And so that is where this Marsilian C comes in. There's also things like the Canis Major. There's also the Cry Mutiny. There's Love and Death. There's a bunch of options for Heavy Solar GLs. And this is not something I would definitively use. It's something that I would try 
It's something that I'd recommend trying, but I don't know if it's gonna be great. But anyways, there are a couple things we have to talk about with the Glassway first before going over our loadouts, because the Glassway is a doozy. The Glassway is a tough one. So I would highly recommend that everybody on your fire team run Overload. It is very, very important because the boss room Overloads are going to be rushing you non-stop and everybody has to have the ability to stun them. And the next thing is that at least one person has to run Wither Horde. If the infinite osseo tick damage bug still works, run that too. However, another thing is that I would recommend that two people run a blinding GL. One at least, but I would recommend two because the wyverns in the boss room can completely just wipe you. It can wipe your run. You'll have to restart over and over again because of the dang wyverns. Their warp lances one-shot you no matter how many resists you're running. So you need to be able to have a blinding GL for those. So just in case somebody dies with the blinding GL or gets caught off guard, I'd recommend having a second person with a blinding GL as well to save the day. Otherwise the run just ends. Now onto our exotic armor recommendations. This is the only of the six GMs where I only have one exotic armor recommendation for all three classes. For Warlock, that's actually gonna be the Stasis Osmiomancy gloves, the Stasis turret spam build. I'm sure you know what that is. Just throw stasis turrets out from the boss room. You know you're gonna stay in that left room. Throw stasis turrets out. It can help slow down those overloads. And remember, stasis slow stuns overloads. And this is why on Hunter, you don't have to go void. I'd also recommend stasis as well. You can run either or, but the dust filled grenades are gonna stun those overloads. The stasis turrets from the warlock are gonna stun those overloads. And also you can slow the progress of those wyverns invading your little cave. So stasis is great here. And also not to mention those constant freezes from the dust fields and the stasis turrets can also constantly stun the barrier champions, kind of reducing your need for barrier weapons at all. And then for the Titan, again, I would recommend Ursa Furiosa. Don't bother running a bubble because in that boss room, if those overload champions get in and rush your bubble, they will kill you out of it. A Wyvern, their warp lance will one shot you out of your bubble. It doesn't matter if you have like triple void resist, triple concussive dampener. If you have armor of light in your bubble, does not matter. Those Wyverns will one shot you regardless. So don't even bother with the bubble. Just run that Sentinel shield, hold it up in that middle doorway for your teammates. If those, you know, those, um, barrier champions are shooting their snipers at you if a new wave of ads spawn and you can just stand in that middle doorway so your teammates can shoot through an ad clear. Now, personally, when I farm the Glassway on Titan, I like to use Heart of the Most Light on Arc Titan and spam those Arc Nades. I kind of got that habit from back when the Arc Nades did intrinsic overload because of the artifact mods, but it's still not terrible. I wouldn't exactly recommend it for a new player, but it's still not bad. You can do some boss damage with that because the storm cloud from the storm grenade just lingers over to the boss, so it's not bad. Now on to some weapon recommendations. Now, something to preface this is that in this GM, I would highly recommend that everybody have either a bow or a high impact pulse rifle because you're gonna need some major range on this one. Not just for the boss room, but for the middle section, when you're clearing the plate, there's a lot of snipers in the distance. You're gonna have to keep your distance a lot, you know, and the areas leading up to the boss room as well. You're gonna need some range. If you're running something like an SMG for overload, it's not really gonna work out that well, unless your other option you have in your other slot is gonna be a ranged weapon. So keep that in mind, range is very important here. Now onto the exotic recommendations, and I'm very biased with Lemon Arc because I love this weapon, but it's very, very good in the glass way very reliable for the ranged areas and also just that consistent overload because it alone has intrinsic overload doesn't matter what season it is so very consistent for the boss room as well just consistent damage overall with this weapon because there's barriers of course we return to the other recommendation of outbreak perfected and the wish ender and then like i said if nobody's doing the infinite osteo have at least one person on wither horde because the wither horde is how you're going to deal dot damage to the boss it goes right through his dang hydra shield you can just stick him with it and back up now that's another thing we're getting to because you don't really want to go out there and challenge the boss because he hits really, really hard. Even if you have on concussive dampener and void damage resist on your chest, you always want to just stick the boss and run away. Don't ever stand in his face for more than half a second, trust me. 
he will annihilate you. Now, next up, we got the Divinity. Divinity, of course, stuns those Overload Champions the instant you touch them with this. However, they unstun very quickly, so it's not the best recommendation in the world. It's very good if you know your teammates will be there to melt that Overload instantly. If you know your teammates are not the best players in the world, then don't bother with Divinity. However, a consistent Overload weapon is going to be the Thunderlord. Now the Thunderlord is very meta now. People are melting Nezarak with Thunderlord. I saw some DPS videos of Thunderlord from Ninji, and man, this thing does way more DPS than every other machine gun. It is a monster and is very consistent for those overload champions. It has intrinsic overload on it. Now on to some legendary weapon recommendations. For Barrier, you got things like the Stars and Shadow or the BXR. For Overload, you got the Strident Whistle. Now, the Strident Whistle and the Stars and Shadow can get Vorpal weapons, so they're pretty good to pair with the Osteostriga if you're doing the infinite Vorpal tick damage thing. And a, a rocket that has Vorpal is going to be things like the Hez and Vengeance and the Roar of the Bear, and those are pretty good because it is indeed Solar Surge. And, uh, you know, you have no time to waste in that boss room. Champions and Wyverns will be rushing you, so you definitely want a heavy that can burst damage like crazy. So having a rocket, like a solar rocket or a solar GL because of the GL burn is going to be key here. And then, like I said, you're going to want a blinding GL, at least one, preferably two, but at least one. Now, there are a few different options, you know, because of solar burn and GL burn, there is things like the empty vessel. The empty vessel can get blinding. That's going to be great. The part in our dust can get blinding militia's birthright. However, the one I would recommend above all is going to be the Lingering Dread. And the reason is because it gets Chill Clip. And Chill Clip is going to allow you to stun the Overload Champions. So it's not only a champion weapon, but also allows you to blind those Wyverns. So it's a very important multi-purpose weapon here if you got that role of disorienting grenades with Chill Clip. But if you don't have that, any blinding GL will be fine. Now moving on to the final week would be Lake of Shadows. It's going to be Barrier Unstop, Void Surge, Arc Threat, and Machine Gun Surge. Again, we got the combination a void and machine gun surge together, meaning that a void machine gun is a no-brainer pick here. It is going to be very top tier, especially again with that void Heart of a Most Light Titan and the void Gear Falcon's Hunter. However, that might not exactly be the play in every scenario. That's if you want to play it safe, that's if you want to play it consistent. However, the fast strat, the farm strat, what you really want to do is bake the boss. This boss still, even though Lake of Shadows was revamped and has new encounters, the boss still does not have a health gate, meaning you can still melt him. Uh, so while I would recommend something like Controverse Hold Warlock, if you're farming, you should run Starfire Protocol Warlock. So at the boss room, you want to place a well, and then you want to use your Void Hunter to use Deadfall on the floor next to Grack and tether him for that 30% debuff. And then this is why I would recommend Falling Star Arc Titan for that super strong Thunder Crash. And then you can have somebody with Gallerhorn, that's there in the exotic recommendations. And then in the legendary slot, you can have the other two people on a clown cartridge hothead and just go to town melting that boss with the buffs and the debuffs. And you know, when your stuff's running out, you can use that falling star titan to just thunder crash that boss and do the damage of about four rockets and just one thunder crash. And you can bake that boss really easily. Now for Hunter, I would recommend Gear Falcons if somebody else is running Aeons. However, if you are the only one, I'd recommend Aeons 100% because there are a lot of unstoppable phalanxes that will be in close proximity. There's also a couple close up barrier champs as well. And there's some yellow bars that are not champions that you can finish for special ammo as well. Now for exotic recommendations, we got the conditional finality. Yes, the Root of Nightmares exotic raid shotgun is going to be pretty solid to run here. Because of the amount of unstoppables in close proximity, you can freeze and shatter them, which will stun them. But it's also going to be good for the Tormentor boss. There is a small room uh, right before the boss that has a Tormentor. Don't worry, it's not a boss tier Tormentor, it's just a normal one. But on GM, it's still going to be no joke. And those Tormentors can be frozen, so you can consistently freeze them over and over and over again with a conditional finality, or even something like a Riptide with Chill Clip. 
And then of course, because of barrier, wish ender and outbreak, pretty solid. Wither Horde, always generally just a good weapon to run anytime you can. And now another recommendation that I didn't put on here, if you are running a void subclass and you are running like a hothead or something and you had a free exotic slot, uh, Dead Man's Tail is not too bad. If you have one with like either fourth times a charm or Vorpal, it can be pretty good for stunning those unstoppable champions. Otherwise, if you needed a Void Scout, there is, of course, once again, the Doom of Chelchis, the Vouchsafe, the Aceous Embrace. If you need a Barrier Pulse Rifle, you got the Vele's X, or you can even run a Kinetic one like the Peace of Mind with auto-loading Vorpal and armor piercing rounds is pretty good. And then of course, if you are the Aeon's Hunter, there's a lot of unstops in close proximity. There is a Tormentor that has crit spots. The Nessa's Oblation, once again, is gonna be a very solid pick for those close quarters combat situations, getting champions in a finisher and killing that Tormentor. Now on to the wrap up, there are a lot of recommendations that I wanted to fit in here, but just couldn't fit them in. You know, like for example, Heist Battleground Mars, you could use something like the Graviton Lance that wouldn't be too bad, but it's just, there, there's other better things to run. While I'd like to make a ton of recommendations, there's just, uh, you know, there's better options. And if there's any really awesome things that I may have missed, let me know in the comments down below. Remember, there's a lot of awesome things to even pair with the Infinite Osseo, such as the Wilder Flight, the Cartesian coordinate. There's a bunch of heavy options as well, like the Seven Star of Saw. There was a bunch of awesome arc weapons that I wanted to recommend, but they just didn't fit in with the burn. So, you know, it was tough. The only off burn thing that I recommended was the Hothead for Lake of Shadows, really. So anyways, this season is looking particularly hard, especially more so for Titans. I would not recommend Titans here, even though I am a Titan main myself. I would recommend Warlock and Hunter, especially if this is your first time doing GMs. Good luck out there because four out of six of these are some of the hardest GMs there are. And with that being said, I really hope some of these recommendations from this video have helped you out. And if it did, consider sharing the video with a friend. I'd really appreciate it. I'm sure they find it helpful as well. And if you enjoyed the video, as always, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment because interacting with the video in those kinds of ways really helps it out and helps the algorithm. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Would love to have you here. And with that, I will catch you in the next video. See you later.